You're listening to the Secret Muse Society, where we pull out the things we keep hidden about ourselves. What are the secrets that actually hold us back from the connection we crave? And what happens when we tap into the inspiration we have to offer the world? I'm your host, authenticity coach, Karen Choi. Let's dive in together. Hello, Muse. Hello, Musey, Musey. You are such a Musey. Hello, 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 Muse. Just riffing on your name. You inspire me to sing this song. I don't know where I am going with this, but I think it sounds pretty good. Hello, Muse. (laughs) You inspire me. And that is why this podcast is called The Secret Muse Society. It's because so many of you don't even know or acknowledge or believe how inspiring you truly are. Like when you step into a room or you smile or you laugh in a conversation or those like nuggets of wisdom from your own life experience that you offer. Gosh, this is you. Everything about you is inspiration to the world around you. And I just want you to know that you can inspire yourself too. Like I am always seeking for inspiration through outside muses. Perhaps that's why I see it in you. But you know when things really started to change for me in my life was when I started to acknowledge what was inspiring about me and what about me inspired myself. Sure, it sounds kind of big-headed, but through this journey, I've also learned that that big-headed thought is a conditioned thought. Why can't we believe that we are big and we can take up space and we can own that for ourselves? Just a thought. Dear Muse, I'm so happy you're here. Dear Muse... I just want to give a shout out to a client and friend and also this podcast editor, Emily Milling. This past weekend of when this podcast was recorded, Yusig and I had a date night. We rushed back from a day trip out in the Muskokas for our nephew's sixth birthday, and we rushed back into the city so that we could get to see Emily debut her new releases from her new comedy album, Take Your Life More Seriously, which is coming out on August 31st. And no, this is not sponsored by her. I just want to give a shout out to her because I am so proud of her. I work, her and I, we work together. She hired me as her coach through the process of creating her album. And then to be able to see her in action, performing the songs that she wrote, produced, recorded, even created all of the instrumental backtrack. And it was funny as hell. And she even made a tearaway costume for that show. She had dance moves, really groovy earrings, fly makeup. Like her her show was on the same night as Lady Gaga. And I was like, you know what? Lady Gaga is amazing. But I'm here witnessing Emily Milling doing her thing, and that is just as amazing, just as amazing to see her going after her dreams. And Lady Gaga is a muse and inspiration too. Why? Because she goes after her dreams, and she uses her creativity to do so, and she puts it all out there through how she looks, how she sounds, how she sings, how she moves and how she interacts with other people, and how she brings them into her world. And even from the outside, we feel like that's possible for us. So shout out, Emily. You're an inspiration and a muse to me, and I'm so proud of you, and you have so much to be proud of for yourself. I am so excited 
for your comedy album. Let's drop a little bit of your single here if you want. <laughs> and then we'll go into today's episode. This one is going out to my mom. Yeah. You raised me right, but now it's time for me to move on out. I'm so prepared because of all of the things that you taught me, mom. I'm like really independent now. Hello, Muse. So welcome back. This is episode 30. And I threw it out on Instagram asking my followers. I don't really like the word followers, my audience, my people, my community, you. I asked you, should I do a podcast episode on what I love about astrology? And I got a lot of yeses. So that just reaffirmed, sure, people want to hear what I like. And that's okay. You know, It's interesting during this journey of building my own service-based business, that's what coaching is, and through the marketing and what I've been learning as a freelancer and having to market and sell and communicate and branding, all those kinds of things outside of a corporate setting, it feels very different because when we're talking about offering your value to an audience and attracting an audience through offering your value. You know, there's a lot of thinking about solving problems and offering really great advice or tips or structure or systems. And often we get so, as creators and as artists and business owners, we get so wrapped up in trying to come up with something that we forget that we have innate value. And so (laughs) this is my own way of really reinforcing that thought and belief in myself that says, hey, you as you, what you love, what excites you is a value to the world. So share that. Share it. It is kind of embarrassing. All right. Well, hey, working with new feelings isn't always easy and squashing old thoughts is not comfortable for the ego or the mind. And that's okay. That's what it is. That's what's coming up right now. So what do I love about astrology? Do you love astrology? Or are you a hater of astrology? Like you just don't think that it makes any sense. It doesn't, you don't believe in it, or it's not a science. It's not real. Or perhaps you are just neutral about astrology. You don't really care. Or maybe you have been afraid of astrology because it is, maybe you think it's a sin. It's divination and in a Christian upbringing or whatever other traditional religious belief system has taught you that astrology is bad. Or maybe I think that this episode is for anybody, really, because all of those Things that I just mentioned are the feelings and thoughts I've had about astrology in my past. And I've gone to a place where I can own it. I love astrology because I just find it so much 
fun. And that is the main reason. And I think that's okay. And that's enough. But I'm going to tell you more today about the more things that I love about astrology. First of all, let's establish like what astrology is to me and what it is not. Just so we have a common starting point and you know where I'm coming from. And so we can move forward in this kind of fun conversation, this sharing. So what is astrology to me? Well, astrology is like a recipe card. It say you take like a delicious, delicious meal, an entree. Why am I thinking of beef Wellington? Because my friends, Jeff and Sahira, they made the most incredible beef Wellington. And if you know beef Wellington, it is like a very complicated, in-depth, many steps, multiple ingredients type of process. And if imagine like I just served you and put on the table the whole beef Wellington. And you look at it and wonder, what is this? What is it going to taste like? What is in it? What am I eating? Well, to me, astrology is that recipe card for that beautiful entree. And you are that beautiful entree. Astrology helps to break down all the ingredients of who we are. It tells us, you know, it gives us a sense of our cooking time. <laughs> And the temperatures that we need to reach to be ready or perhaps to be served or even to play with different variations of flavors based on temperature. The recipe card also gives you a sense of what flavors are to come and what you can add to get different flavors. So if you are the entree, astrology is a recipe card. This is how I see it. What astrology is not to me, it's not woo-woo or weird. I realize the words woo-woo and weird is relative to what I think other people think it might be. Like other people might think it's woo-woo and weird, but I actually don't. I really like astrology for what it is, what I get from it. I take what works for me and I leave the rest. So call me woo-woo or weird according to your definitions. I don't find this woo-woo or weird. I can't even really think of what I might even find woo-woo or weird right now. I kind of define woo-woo and weird as just something you don't understand. And so maybe that's why astrology is not woo-woo or weird to me is because I do understand it to the degree that satisfies me enough. <laughs> I like weird. So that's that. What astrology is to me, it's a tool. It's a tool. It's a life tool. It's it helps you to communicate. Astrology is like a language that can create understanding between two people. Astrology is a tool for just understanding where you are and perhaps why you do what you do, or perhaps why you feel what you feel, or perhaps why you behave how you behave. And I really believe that when you notice something, that's when you can change something. So you could notice the pad your own patterns from that. You could notice what you want to keep, what you don't want to keep. Astrology is a tool. Astrology is not religion to me. I don't like astrology to me is not God. <laughs> I don't worship the stars or the planets. I don't see the stars and planets or even the people who read them as deities or supreme beings. I hold space for religious faith and the spiritual aspects of astrology. Astrology to me is not religion. It's not a set of beliefs, but it is a system for understanding. And so what astrology is to me is, again, a system of understanding. It has helped me to connect with my intuition and who I am outside of my conditioning and helped me to really break down what was told to me and help me to rebuild a new kind of internal world. <laughs> Astrology as a system has given me space to really go inward, to find places of quiet introspection, places that are safe, 
and places that are judgment free. It also is a system, believe it or not. Like when I was saying I hold religion and astrology and spirituality together, like there's space for it all. It is also a system in that it astrology has given me a system to kind of come and meet with God in a different way and my creator. So astrology is not spiritual in the sense that I worship it, but it is spiritual in the sense that it connects me to you, me to nature and our planets, our universe, me to even just the unseen, like the metaphysical world. I I think that's also part of why people think that astrology is woo-woo is because you can't really see it. It is reality that's created outside of our our touching, feeling, hearing, smelling senses and perceptions. It's not reachable through our studies of physical and material form type of things. I really love that astrology takes us out of ego. Like when, for those of you who've studied Eckhart Tolle, he talks about how the ego is attached to form identity. And although astrology is very much linked to identity and who we are, it has less form. It challenges form in the sense that it's like magic. <laughs> I'm kind of veering off, but that's what astrology does. It's like this invisible world that is so fun to play around with. And actually, even the way I'm talking about it is very, if, is very much like my own astrological chart. And so let's, if I'm not going to get into, you know, explaining astrology or teaching it because I am by no means an expert. I read it for fun. I study it for fun, for my own self-study, for my study of other humans. And because I, I'm so fascinated by the human experience and people's stories that astrology really weaves in and out of that so naturally. Perhaps that's why I'm so drawn to it. But in this episode of It's Okay With You, I just want to talk about what I love about it and see if it resonates with you. Because ultimately, what we love, or maybe what we hate, actually, what anything that really triggers a strong emotional response resonates in some way, right? Like we vibrate, it triggers us, it pushes us, it rings our bell in some way. And astrology rings a, a, a nice tone for me. It's like, ding, ding. Maybe astrology rings a not pleasant tone for some people like, ah, ah. <laughs> actually, sometimes I read my horoscope and it triggers an, ah, ah. but that's the fun thing about astrology for me. It awakens emotional responses. And when I feel my feelings, I feel alive. So astrology helps me feel alive. All right. I had three things to share with you that astro what I love about astrology, but I also just shared two other things. So that this is, you're just going to hear it all. And uh, this episode is really fun for me. And I don't know why I haven't done it. Well, I do know why I haven't done it before. Do you want to know why? I, I haven't really talked about astrology because of my religious conflicts with it. If you've been listening for a while or you know me, I am raised in a Christian household with Christian belief systems. And I have gone through a process of reconciling my faith and my fear, the trauma and the love. And I think I'm in a good place to that I am able to hold space for all of it and be okay with it. I'm not really fighting against it as much and it meaning Christianity and it being my love for things outside of Christianity. Actually, I read recently an article in the LA Times and it was talking about the shift out of traditional religion and into this spirituality, new age world of astrology, crystals, tarot. That's what people they are seeing in late Gen X and millennials and the Gen Z 
generations. And I really think this article is interesting. The first thing I ask is I wonder where the writer's bias lies because bias is always at play with opinions. But you now know where my biases may be, Christian upbringing, but also as a person who is exploring. And here's a quote from that article. They It says, the cause behind the spiritual shift is a combination of factors. In more than a dozen interviews for this story with people ranging in age 18 to their early 40s, and I'm 42, and I know that you listener might be in that age range too, a common theme emerged. And it says, they were raised with one set of religious beliefs, whether it be Catholic, Jewish, Buddhist. But as they became adults, they felt that faith didn't completely represent who they were or what they believed. I pulled this quote out because it's true for me. Growing up in a Christian household, Christianity gave me the faith and trust and a sense of I'm going to be okay and I'm taken care of and God has a purpose for me and I am safe. That's the ultimate feeling from Christianity that I received and that I'm not alone. But it also didn't completely represent who I was or help me figure out who I was. And I also had a lot of questions about Christian beliefs because it just didn't click for me. They didn't make sense. And so I had a lot of questions, but I felt shut down. I felt like I wasn't supposed to talk or question anything, that I just needed to accept what was said as fact and as as the end story. And that was very disempowering for me not to be able to speak up and ask questions or show my curiosity or, or want to learn more or dig deeper or even to see outside of what it was to challenge it. I just couldn't really accept that I needed to be a sheep with blinders on. And so through my journey over the last, like, I would say that I've gone intensive over the last three years about who I am, what do I believe, what biases do I hold, and how was all of that made up and what I'm ready to let go of. Christianity just felt like there was a lot of judgment. This is good. That is bad. There's only one way. And I just didn't really see the world or my life experience as that. I felt like I wanted to discover more or to explore more or to find out what was out there. It was kind of a fear of missing out. But also, I just can't come to terms with the fact that this world has so much to offer that we're, that life isn't about experiencing it all. (laughs) So, and I mean, also in Christianity, like the Bible, it has very, very clear instructions about divination. My mom pointed this out to me recently because as a pastor's daughter, and I am also a pastor's daughter and a pastor's granddaughter, the Bible is the way, right? The Bible is the truth. And in the Old Testament, Deuteronomy 18, 10 to 11, it says this about divination. There shall not be found among you any that useth divination or an observer of times or an enchanter or a witch or a charmer or a consulter with familiar spirits or a wizard or a necromancer, necromancer. And here's where the disempowerment is. It's like, well, why? Why? Why are these things seen as bad? That's what I would like to ask God, actually, or perhaps ask the person who wrote this Bible, this chapter of the Bible. Why are these things seen as bad? Whose power are they taking away? Whose power would they give? What would change? (laughs) I'm really curious. Yeah. How might this be trying to control? Or where's the fear of these people having power? The other part of Christianity... And I'm sorry, I know that this episode is about astrology, but astrology to me as a kid was, and now I'm talking about Christianity, but as a kid, I was told that astrology was wrong because it was an alternate to Christianity. And any alternate to Christianity was presented as a sin because Christianity teaches that Jesus is the only way. And Christianity is all about 
proving that Jesus is the only way and proving through the Bible that Jesus is the only way. And now I'm at a place where, yeah, I could see how Jesus is the only way, but I don't really see Jesus the way you see Jesus. Bible or Christian school or preachers that I listened to when I was a kid or even relatives, family who see Jesus in a certain way. I believe that spirituality is a relationship like so many things. Actually, Christianity teaches that your faith is your relationship with God, your relationship with Jesus, your relationship with the Holy Spirit. And as we know, everybody's relationships are different. So mine might be different from the person that was teaching me that I was wrong. (laughs) So this is where we are. What I love about astrology is that if you're into it, if you're open to it, you can explore it without judgment. When you explore with the intention of healing and growth, there really is no room for judgment. However, we do make space for discernment. And the discernment piece is saying, okay, is this for me? Is this for who I want to be? The goals that I'm working towards, the how I want to serve the world, the change I want to see, the change I want to be, that's the difference between the discernment and the judgment. It's not saying this is good or bad. It's just saying, hey, is this going to work for me? So I take the, I take what works and I leave the rest. What I love about astrology is it has given me permission to be who I am and has helped with radical self-acceptance. And I use this word, quoting it from Chandy Nicholas, who is an astrologer who wrote a book called You Were Born for This. And if you are learning about astrology, this is a super fun book. She lays it out so you can learn about your sun, moon, and rising and gives you insights about the planets and how the houses work. Like she actually, it's a great book to learn and go a little deeper into your own personal study. All right, Chenny Nicholas says in her book, astrology is a relentless reminder that we are the way we are on purpose and that who we are has purpose, has value, has within it a blessing. The setbacks, difficulties, and challenges we face are all a part of what makes us unique. And so astrology is this piece that was missing for me in my life of finding purpose, of knowing that everything about me is for a reason and feeds into that purpose and reaffirming that I am of value and I am of worthiness and that my life is a blessing, not just to me and the people who love me, but can be a blessing to the world and a blessing meaning a gift. And all the setbacks, difficulties, and challenges we face, that's reality. But what are you going to do with what you've got? What are you going to use and leverage in your life to come back to your purpose? And when I talk about how astrology is self-acceptance, it's like, okay, the cool thing about astrology and going deeper into it is when you find out your exact birth time, you can sign in to an online astrological chart to learn where all your planets and your houses, and you can really get deep on your own, or you can work with an astrologer who would do a natal chart reading for you, which I have. And if you're curious about who I've worked with, send me an email at Karen at KarenChoy.co or send me a DM via Instagram. I'm happy to uh, recommend to you all the incredible people who I've worked with in learning astrology. So your birth chart, it reveals like your unique talents and your challenges and opportunities. And I think it's so fun. Birth chart is basically like your SWOT analysis for yourself, your strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. That's your birth chart. Charted out with stars and planets and houses and like a really beautiful visual. If you're a visual learner, 
who, which I am, if you love symbolism, which I am, I do. And that's part of why I love astrology. That's, that's just what connects, right? Okay. I'm not here to con- convince you of astrology. I'm here to tell you what I love about it. I just have to remind myself of that. Hey, can I do a little sidebar right now of the whole convincing and preaching thing? This is something I recently learned since we're kind of talking about Christianity and astrology is one thing that I noticed about Christianity in my own experience and the videos I've learned, I've I've watched from people who've sent them to me that Christianity and Jesus is about proving that Jesus is the only way. And, and, And because I grew up in that kind of system, that structure, that way of teaching, that way of communicating, really that way of communicating. You might hear this when you speak with evangelical people is that they are trying to convince you that Jesus is the only way and that any other way that you are on is wrong or, but it is, sorry, it's not about the like the yes, that's right or no, that's wrong. It's the convincing energy. It's the preaching energy. It's the I have to tell you energy. So that's why I, I, I often try not, I hesitate because I worry that I get into that zone where I'm very preachy. I don't want to come from that place. So I'm just reminding myself that that's where that teaching, that learning, that conditioning of com- the way I communicate may come from and come back to this, just sharing what I do love because and I hope that you're catching how enthusiastic about this I am. This is going to be a long episode, I have a feeling. We're already at 33 minutes. Okay. All right. So the birth chart is like a SWOT analysis and just a high level, just in case you're not that familiar with your sun. So most of us know about our sun signs, right? Like, what's your sign? I think you would say, I'm a Pisces, or you would say, you're a Sagittarius, and you know a little bit about your sun sign, but your sun sign, according to Chani Nicholas, is your life's purpose. And your moon is your physical and emotional needs. My moon happens to be Scorpio, which is pretty deep and intense. And then ascendant is your rising. And that is your motivation for life and the steer person of your ship. Some other aspects of the birth chart that has been super revealing and insightful for me to learn about is your north node and the midheaven. Mine are in Leo and describes how you will reach your purpose. Correct me if I'm wrong. Again, I'm not an astrologer. I'm going by what I've learned and can remember in this moment. And other parts of the astrological chart that are really exciting to me is something that new that I've learned is your stellium, is if you have a stellium. And the stellium is if you have three planets in different houses. I hope I'm getting that right. And the reason why this is really interesting to me is because I am a Pisces sun. And a Pisces sun from what you know, is like very free flowing and creative and kind of like otherworldly, not that grounded, really creative and artistic. And we speak outside of words. Whereas Virgo, if you know Virgos, are grounded. They're an earth sign and they have systems and structure. They are very regimented. A lot of Virgos I've heard call themselves very obsessive and compulsive about details and and form, right? And organization. And so if you think about my Pisces sun and my stellium of Virgo, they are very opposites on one spectrum of me. And this is the other part of astrology that I love is when we start acknowledging how much of a spectrum, a continuum, maybe just a big ball of energy in life that we are and how there's so many opposites and paradoxes that those opposites and paradoxes no longer really hang out in one place as opposites. And when I say opposites, I mean, you have to pick or choose. Like you no longer have to segregate. You can actually merge and see how they balance and work together. And when we acknowledge this in ourselves, 
we really acknowledge this in others. And that is another thing I love about astrology and why astrology to me is spiritual is because the understanding of ourselves, we gain and expand our understanding of other people and we boost our empathy. We feel more connected. And because of that, there's like this bigger sense of belonging and responsibility to the collective because no one is left or right. When we really accept and acknowledge all that we are, we really see that we're all just like that beautiful rainbow in between. And even between red, orange, yellow, green, blue, there is no, even those colors blur, right? That's what astrology, that's one thing I just love about astrology. It is really a positive place to learn about humanity. <laughs> and our connection to this universe, and perhaps even the multiverses that we create. <laughs> okay, another thing that I love about astrology, and which could probably be illustrated by what I've talked about so far, if you're not into astrology, is that it's a communication tool. Astrology has like a very, create has created a common language to describe who we are, right? Like the sun, moon, ascendant, north nodes, Saturns, all the planets and what they mean and how their energies work when they're close to earth and the moon. <laughs> and even the houses around that, the houses are something I still have yet to dive into and to understand. But I did recently learn that, for example, each house is, is a life category. So say like your 10th house, is about career and work. And when I recently spoke with an astrologer or an astro analyst, she kind of reframed career and work and expanded it into roles and responsibilities, right? Like we're not just our jobs or our job titles. Even our job titles have a greater purpose in the world, in the collective. And so now I kind of see this 10th house as our roles and responsibilities in our like families and in our communities and in the world. So you kind of see how you can position yourselves at a micro and a macro level. And, and so even you kind of hearing me, if you're not in the astrology world, it may sound woo woo and weird because it's a foreign language, right? But then when astrology enthusiasts, when we get together and we talk this way, we get what each other are saying, right? And so that's what I love about it. It's a communication tool. And I happen to have my communication planet is, the communication planet is Mercury and I communicate with Pisces. Pisces, I have Pisces in Mercury. See, I don't even know really how to like phrase how the two connect, but that's what it is. I have Pisces and Mercury, so I speak in this kind of flowery, <laughs> I don't want to be mean to myself and say like all over the place, but it is all over the place. And that may also be kind of cool, poetic, even language. I wish, I wish I could talk like a poet. So that's what I love about astrology. It's a communication tool. And maybe I'll leave with this. Oh, there's so many other juicy things. Like I love astrology for me points out what you should pay attention to or work on. So astrology has really increased my self-awareness and also my external awareness. When it comes to self-awareness, so for example, knowing my son is in Pisces, I have learned that personal boundaries are challenging. For me, they don't, it, it's not natural for me to create them. So I could spend some energy to work on creating personal boundaries. And I have because astrology helped to inform this. Like I realized looking back in my life and the patterns that I could see that, yes, this was correct. So then I acted on it. And another thing about the astrology chart is, for example, the North Node. The knowing my North Node is in Leo has, and Leo really representing pride and leadership has, and showmanship a liking to perform and to entertain and to bring joy to audiences has reaffirmed my goals of like who I want to be, how I can serve and reaffirmed that I am capable because it is 
part of who I am and how I was built. And why is that reaffirmation so important? Well, for me, without knowing this, I didn't know this about my North Node and Leo before. I didn't really give myself permission to lean into that desire of showmanship and performing and pride and leadership. Like those are pretty big words for someone back then who only knew about Pisces being artsy and dreamy. I was like, well, what can I do with that? Or is it big headed of me to imagine that I want the challenge of being a leader. I want to be proud of the influence or the impact that I can make, the difference I can make in people's lives in a community. And so there's just another example of how knowing my astrology doesn't really change anything in terms of who I am, but it does change the energy. Like it gives me permission to bring out a thing that I was hiding. Hey, and that kind of comes back to this whole muse thing, right? Muse. Musy, 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 you can inspire yourself when you learn more about yourself. I can't help but want to connect back to Christianity again because I have a feeling that some of you may have Christian backgrounds. And if you haven't noticed this subconscious connection or influence in your belief systems, if I bring this up, if it helps you, and again, take it or leave it, that's fine. But what I learned in Christianity was that you should focus on learning about God. You learn about Jesus. You learn about Jesus' story. And you learn the Bible. And you memorize that. And you put your effort and your knowledge and wisdom seeking towards that. The problem is it didn't really teach me who I was, even though it kept saying, well, if you learn about God, you'll learn about yourself. And I couldn't learn about God because I felt like God was so far away from me or Jesus was so perfect or it was so unattainable. And the interesting thing and what I do love about astrology is that by learning about myself, I have actually strengthened and gained more understanding of who God is. Maybe that is for a different episode at another time. But if you're interested in having this conversation with me, I'll just put out that teaser, okay? For now, send me an email at karen at karenchoy.co or send me a DM on Instagram at karenchoy.co. And let's talk about that, like how learning about yourself actually puts you in closer connection with God by having more faith and trust in yourself actually helps to create more faith and trust in God in the universe. By learning more about who you are and what you want in the world, you see how it aligns with Jesus. After all, are we not created in his or her or non-binary own image, God's image? So learning about ourselves helps us to learn about God. All right. And finally, the last thing that I love about astrology, I could talk about astrology and what I love about it forever is learning about universal archetypes, like the energy and personalities and characteristics and virtues of yourself and how you're made up of all these things. And you can see how you're made up of things that other people share. Like how much fun is it to meet another person who shares your sun sign or who shares your moon sign? For example, my friend Kat, who might be listening. Hey, Kat. (laughs) We realize that we both share a rising sign of Libra when our sun signs are both water signs. So Kat is a Scorpio sun. I'm a Pisces sun. We are very emotional. We are very creative. We are very intense and deep, which could hold us back in this capitalistic world or this very grounded earth, physical centered world. But our Libra rising, which we both share, actually helps us connect with other people and makes us more appealing, kind of pulls us out of that really, am I saying this word right, nebulous, like this abstract world into a place that people can get and understand? We had a good laugh about that. So like when you meet another person with similar archetypes, it's fun. You could feel that energy before you even talk about it. I have often used astrology as kind of a a cheat sheet or a shortcut to getting to know people. And 
Obviously, you have to keep your biases and assumptions at bay and always be open to surprises because people will always surprise you, right? Like a sun sign that has all these other things in their chart may look completely different. So for example, I am a Pisces and I had a good friend growing up who was also a Pisces. And we are very different Pisces, but it's probably because diving into our astrological charts, there's so much more information. So I love astrology because it proves, (laughs) it reaffirms to you that you're way more than just one thing. You have so many layers, so many dimensions, so many paradoxes that, that are at play. I also love the symbolism of astrology. As a visual person, it just helps me understand things quicker. For example, Pisces' sun, again, is represented by two fish swimming in two different directions. And that's helped me to really accept the fact that I am constantly flowing in two opposite directions. And that really actually ties interesting well with my rising, which is Libra, which is the scale which holds two things. And I'm always really kind of like a balancing act. On one hand, there's this. And on one hand, there's this, another thing. And, you know, it it has helped me to have more compassion for myself when I can't really come to a specific opinion or, or decision. And I've noticed through that compassion and grace, because of knowing my astrology, helped me to create the space, which then led to forming an opinion and picking, making a decision when it was challenging. Like being mad at yourself for not being something that you think you should be actually detracts you from doing the thing that you have to do, right? So I love astrology because it creates this, it's very active. It has helped me to move in the direction that my intuition is leading me, perhaps even God is calling me. So this has been a fun episode, right? Like astrology is supposed to be fun. I don't know that traditional religion has been presented as fun, not in my experience, at least. Maybe 80-20, 20% fun, 80% really, really not as fun. But not fun things are also important. And so what astrology has taught me is like, don't get too caught up in proving or justifying who you are and why it's okay to like something. Just play with it. Just enjoy it. Talk with people who feel the same way. Learn about it. Study it. Let your enthusiasm generate joy and that be a value and a gift and a blessing to the world. You know, when we started this episode, I said astrology is not religion. Astrology is spirituality. And I think that's what it is. It's like connecting with yourself and connecting with others. And if you value authenticity the way that I do, then valuing yourself is part of that practice. If you value spirituality the way that I do, then connection and empathy and compassion for others is part of your practice. And if you really believe that we are here for a purpose, and to create meaning in our life, then astrology is also a beautiful way to align with that. Again, if you are into astrology, I've been thinking about perhaps creating creating a coaching container that is around our astrology, but doesn't focus on it. Again, because I'm not an astrologer, but perhaps I could bring on some amazing people to into this place of discovery and see where we go. We won't have a defined goal except just to explore more of ourselves, to uncover more secrets. After all, this is the Secret Muse Society. So if you're interested or curious about what that could look like and maybe even want to give me a shout out on email. Again, I've been saying it a lot. Karen at KarenChoy.co or DM me on Instagram at KarenChoy.co. Let's talk about what this could look like and what kind of fun we could have in getting to know ourselves, in getting to know each other, getting to know how we can make this world a better place. We don't have to save the world. 
but we can make it a better place by just being better for ourselves. That's it, my friends. Goodbye, Musy Musy. It was fun musing with you. Hello, Musy Musy. I hope you tune in next time. <laughs> Bye. I love you. Thanks. Thank you for listening to the Secret Muse Society. Don't forget to subscribe to this podcast so you never miss an episode. And if you haven't yet, please go to Apple Podcasts to rate and review this podcast so other modern muses like you can find us too. I invite you to continue the conversation and connect with me on Instagram at karenchoy.co. Join me next week for more secrets inspired by you. I'm Karen Choi. Until next time, stay gold. Stay gold.